Eiropas Savienībā ir sava kosmosa programma. Tās pamatīdēja ir tas, ka kosmos ir rīks attīstībai uz Zemes. Iespēja uzņēmēja darbībai ekonomikas izaugsmēja un efektivitātes veicināšanai dažādās nozarēs visā pasaulē. Šajās dienās Rīgā viesojas Eiropas Savienības kosmosa programmas aģentūras delegācija un tās izpilddirektors Rodrigo da Costa. Viņu šorīt esam aicinājuši uz interviju. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you and thank you very much for being with us uh, this morning. We just we have just mentioned that um, actually the main idea of the European Union space program is that space is a tool for development uh, on Earth. How exactly and what is space good for? Um, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for having me this morning. Uh, yeah, I mean, space is today in everyday's life. It's, uh, it's, in, it's an, in our daily life. We use space when we navigate. We use space uh, when we communicate. We use space when we watch the weather forecast, for example. So space is really um, everyday uh, in our lives. In the Youth Space Programme, our focus is really um, the space uh, that adds value to the people's life, that adds value to our society as well to our security, certainly. And we are looking at things such as navigation uh, with the Galileo program, the European Global Navigation Satellite System, providing positioning uh, capabilities worldwide. We are looking at Earth observation, so our eyes on Earth. How do we monitor, how do we uh, evaluate the evolution uh, of our Earth? And more and more, we are also looking at, uh, at telecommunications. So basically, things that then people use in their everyday life. And that is a fact. We all use mobile phones and we watch television, we use the navigation systems, of course. And um, it means that we are using the space technologies. But uh, if we speak about Latvia, about uh, our possibilities, about our uh, ambitions, we are a small country, but uh, our ambitions are there. So uh, how would you describe what are the Latvia's opportunities and where should we look for? Uh, first of all, certainly, I mean, as EU citizens, uh, we are all using space every day. You mentioned in your mobile phones, right now about 50% of the apps that you have in your mobile phone, they are using space data one way or the other. So you really see how much of space uh, there is uh, in, 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 in all the actions that we take every day. And if we look concretely at the EU member states, and if we certainly if we look concretely, uh, concretely at Latvia, we are seeing more and more applications. We are seeing companies that participate not only uh, in the development of the technologies to build the satellites, to build the ground segments, but very, very importantly, we are seeing companies that want to use space data and space services uh, in order to bring benefits to many different sectors. Certainly very, very important uh, uh, here in uh, the Latvian reality, things such as agriculture, forestry, disaster management. We do have uh, companies that are working with us, for example, in the development of um, more efficient buildings, uh, digital twins of of buildings. We are working with companies as well that are uh, working on uh, wildlife uh, monitoring and forestry management uh, in uh, EU-wide projects. So as you can see, everyone can benefit and that mm -hmm. everyone can contribute to the EU space program. Uh, our viewers uh, could be interesting to hear what it takes to work uh, at the European Union Agency for the space program. Should you be, a, I don't know, a space engineer or what? It's a, very good, it's a very good question. It sounds very complex when we talk yeah. about space. Uh, the reality is much simpler than that. <laughs> First of all, you have to be a EU national. This is part of the rule of working uh, in, the European, uh, in the European Union. Uh, the second thing is uh, certainly you need to add value. If I look at uh, uh, our staff, uh, we have, of course, specialists. We have engineers. We have aerospace specialists, telecom specialists, etc. Um, but we also have lawyers. We have administrators. We have economists. Um, and when we want to bring space to the people, and when we want to bring space to the different sectors, be it to road transport, to rail, to agriculture, forestry, banking and finance, etc., we also need specialists from those target areas, people that understand how the banking industry, how the insurance industry, for example, can benefit from space, and the best people are certainly the specialists in those areas. Do you know if there are some uh, Latvians already working in the agency, or maybe if somebody uh, watching us 
us right now is thinking about uh, applying to the agency. What should they, they do? No, so certainly, we, we want people to apply. And by the way, part of my mission here uh, for these two days is also to make the agency more known, more known for uh, uh, staff uh, applicants. So we would like to have uh, staff applicants more and more also from Latvia, but also our projects, our funding opportunities, uh, how Latvian industry, uh, small companies, large companies, uh, universities can benefit and can contribute to the, to, the, to, the, to the research that we do. Yeah, practice uh, opportunities also for students, for example? Uh, certainly, we, we, we welcome uh, many students. Uh, we do have a, a very wide uh, traineeship program, uh, typically for people that are closer to the end of their studies or in the mm -hmm. beginning of the professional career. And it is a very good opportunity on the one hand to get to know how the European Union works, what is the European Union, all the, 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 the machine, etc., but also to have very practical contact with daily life. What would be your advice for Latvian entrepreneurs, comp companies, uh, which, are, which have the ambitions uh, to do something in the space program? Certainly. The first thing, uh, entrepreneurs, startups, they play a fundamental role. Uh, they bring agility, they bring the ability to innovate. So this is really crucial. This is, uh, this is indeed uh, key. Um, advice is to be done, uh, advice is to be given. Certainly, uh, first and foremost, don't lose the impetus, don't lose the innovation capability. Second, look for opportunities. We have created in the EU, uh, related to space, a very large program, it's called Cassini. Uh, with Cassini, uh, we are uh, fostering, we are financing ideas, we are helping uh, entrepreneurs to get in contact with investors, with people uh, that want to grow businesses. So look for those opportunities. There, are, there is really a one-stop shop of capabilities on how to uh, develop uh, your business. In which in industries, companies can participate? Uh, everyone that can use space data and that can use space services. So uh, we are really talking from companies from very diverse sectors. Um, one of the key priorities that we have uh, is to bring what we call space outside the bubble. It's out space outside uh, our little community of space experts. Because as I said, and as I mentioned in the beginning, space is really everywhere. Everyone is using and is in contact with space. In your opinion, what are the most important challenges in the future for the space agency? So for our agency, there are indeed challenges. I mean, the ambitions of the European Union in space are growing and are growing uh, uh, continuously, uh, uh, certainly by the benefits that space uh, provides to the implementation of the Green Deal, uh, also the benefits uh, for digitalization, for our sovereignty as a union, uh, for our security, uh, for our well-being uh, uh, as a society. Uh, so all these pose challenges and uh, certainly to deliver, but I have a team that is very, very much motivated and that's very much focusing on delivering value for EU citizens. I have a question more on philosophical side, uh, most probably uh, explorations, mm -hmm. uh, either space or others. Uh, they are um, always uh, there are always consequences, and sometimes the consequences can be grave ones. We saw it with Titan, with uh, explorations of Titanic, but still, n uh, not uh, nonetheless of the risks. People they have the surge, they are looking for new explorations for reaching uh, new horizons. Why? Why are we like that? Yeah, uh, so first disclaimer, we as an agency, we, do not, we are not involved in science and, uh, science and exploration. Our focus is really uh, the navigation, the telecom, the uh, earth, uh, earth observation, but also space situational awareness. Now, exploration plays a fundamental role because exploration uh, first is a motivator. It's a way uh, how we can motivate also new people to join the space domain. Uh, everyone likes their astronauts, so people, uh, children and, and, and newcomers to the domain uh, are motivated by the domain of exploration. Exploration is about science as well. Uh, and through space, we discover many of the basic science that, that we need to know in order to understand how chip works, how camera works, etc., etc. So it's really about uh, doing the fundamental research uh, that, we need, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that we need globally as a society. And in the end, uh, humankind, uh, we are explorers. We have always been explorers. Uh, certainly our border will not stop in our Earth. We will go beyond that. Yeah, and as we mentioned, that the space is a tool for development on the Earth. Uh, if we watch under the screen now, there's a big ferry coming in now in the Riga port. So 
they are using the space technologies. I'm, I'm, I'm so very, very sure they are. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you very much for being with us this morning and uh, thank you very much for explaining the space technologies and the importance here on the Earth. And thank you for having things. me. Thank you very thank much. Eiropas Savienības Kosmos programmas aģentūras izpildi direktors Rodrigo Dacosta šorīt pie mums rīt panrāmā.